Cyberpunk Reader. Bernie Crope is a short story by William Gibson that was first published in 1982. It is a classic work of science fiction that explores themes of technology, identity, and the future. The story is set in a dystopian version of the 21st century and follows professional hackers, Jack, Bobby, and Ricky, who use their skills to infiltrate and manipulate computer systems for personal gain. Bernie Crope serves as a model for Gibson's better-known novel Neuromancer. Themes and concepts are consistent across all of his works, particularly how modern man gets lost in technology which consumes and dominates our lives and alters our relationship to society. And yet individuals find a way to negotiate terms of freedom, love, and peace using the very same technology. Ironically, individuals lose themselves in the very tech that they use to achieve personal freedom. At the same time, they seek to create a self in the creative void of cyberspace, though this self is essentially a fabrication and false duplicate that remains a disembodied vapor. Ultimately, it is love, the love for the fellow loss, that brings the characters into some semblance of personal meaning and regrounding in the body. Additionally, the theme of Chrome is a metaphor for the attraction of shiny technology, whose appeal is often superficial and hollow, while at the same time, the emergence of cyberspace allows for the creation of virtual selves which gives a means to project this shiny and shallow appearance to the world. But neither new technology nor virtual technology can completely erase the hard reality of our day-to-day -day lives. In the story, the two main hackers named Automatic Jack and Bobby Quiet team up to steal from a notorious criminal known as Crow. The break-in is successful, but their actions have unforeseen consequences that leave both men questioning the choices they have made. The novella explores themes of love, loyalty, and the impact of technology on society. Bobby becomes infatuated with a girl named Ricky, who is working in a brothel with ties to Crow. After the break-in, Ricky uses her earnings to buy a set of cybernetic eye implants and go to Hollywood, but Jack secretly arranges for her to go to Chiba City instead. The news leaves both men devastated, as they have grown to love Ricky, and Jack never sees her again. Lost in technology One theme in Burning Crope is how technology alters the trajectory of personal lives and may even lead to the erasure of the self. In the story, the main characters, Automatic Jack, Bobby Quiet and Ricky, use their skills to infiltrate and manipulate computer systems for personal gain. Technology is figured as both a tool and a threat, allowing people to access and control vast amounts of information, but also making them vulnerable to surveillance and attack. Jack is a skilled hacker who focuses on hardware while Bobby is an expert in software. The story begins in Bobby's loft, where the two men gather to hack into a system that will make them richer than they could have ever imagined. They are described as being in love with their own equipment and with the machinery of their trade and their success as hackers gives them a sense of power and control over their lives. However, their reliance on technology also blurs the line between their real and virtual selves, and they are forced to confront the consequences of their actions when they hack into the system of a powerful and dangerous AI. The AI is described as a black box, a mysterious and all-powerful entity that seems to operate beyond human understanding. In the end, Bobby and Ricky are able to outsmart the AI and escape with their lives, but the experience leaves them shaken and questioning the dangers of advanced technology. The story raises questions about the impact of technology on society. The street finds its own uses for things. Despite the story's cautionary take on new technology, Gibson also sees promise in how individuals utilize technology in new and unexpected ways. This is summed up in the famous quote that Gibson uses in this story, the street finds its own uses for things which captures an important principle about technology in life. This phrase refers to the idea that individuals will find creative and often unconventional ways to use existing tools for their own purposes. In the context of the story, it can be seen as referring specifically to technology. It highlights how people who don't have formal experience or expertise in computers can still make meaningful contributions if they take initiative and think differently from mainstream culture. The message here is that having knowledge of a particular tool doesn't necessarily guarantee success. Being creative and differentiating yourself can often lead to better results than simply relying on what everyone else is doing. In the story itself, the phrase largely centers on the idea of unexpected and original applications of technology. For example, Bobby's and Jack attempt to steal money from a powerful artificial intelligence is undermined by Jack's dangerous obsession with technology. Through the character's actions throughout the narrative, 
Gibson reveals how technology can be manipulated and abused in ways that transcend its originally intended purpose. The primary application of the street finds its own uses for things in Burning Chrome reflects how people often put existing products to use in new and inventive ways. This concept emerged within American culture when people began using codified hardware components to make custom computers or aircrafts from scratch. In this way, the street finds its own uses for things reflects the power of creative problem solving. It is a motto by which those who do not fall into line with society's expectations can find their place within it. Gibson further examines this concept through Quine and Jack's choices in Burning Crow by channeling their knowledge of technology into a robbery attempt against a powerful AI. They are appending societal conventions about what tech should be used for, that is to say, eschewing an ethical use of tech instead appropriating it with malicious ends. As such, these two figures represent one extreme end of the spectrum while also demonstrating an alternative form of creativity, one derived from criminal activity rather than constructive innovation. Despite the questionable morality behind their hijinks, Gibson suggests that even those types of exploits can have utility if applied properly. Creating a novel tool out of necessity or circumstance that was never seen before may just become commonplace someday. Soon enough following this example set forth by Quine in Jack's enterprise at the conclusion of Burning Crow. Ultimately then the street finds its own uses for things serves as a reminder that all people have access to a degree of creative expression regardless if approved by existing laws surrounding certain products, tools, resources divided by etc. Particularly when concerning modern technological innovations like machine learning and AI development where there may be rules placed on how certain technologies should be used commercially but there will still always be users making awry endeavors outside those norms whether initiated out frustration or genuine interest just like what Bobby Quine and Automatic Jack strive towards at the climax of Gibson's narrative. Gibson's use of this phrase also speaks more broadly about society as whole. In today's world, where technology has become deeply intertwined with our lives, it has never been easier to find your niche or discover new ways to approach problems. There are so many opportunities out there waiting for those who are willing to take risks and put in effort. If you follow the trends, you may end up missing out on something truly great. By using this phrase, Gibson suggests that we should all strive towards new creative solutions rather than getting stuck in habits or norms which might not bring us true satisfaction or progress anymore. Now more than ever before we need fresh ideas, innovative approaches and bold thinking. He implies that every single person has potential within them. It just requires courage and determination to unlock it properly. Overall then, William Gibson's The Street finds its own uses for things speaks both literally as well figuratively. By utilizing these words he hopes readers gain an appreciation for how even those without technical backgrounds can still find opportunity when they look outside traditional avenues. Whether that be through technological advancement or societal change depends on each individual but what matters most is having confidence in yourself and trusting your instincts. Technology and the Virtual Self the characters of Bobby, Jack, and Ricky and William Gibson's story illustrate the challenges and anxieties of this high-tech postmodern world. They come from different backgrounds, but are united in their pursuit of wealth and success in a world controlled by powerful, unseen forces. Bobby, the computer nerd, is lost in a world that values his talents but does not provide a clear path to fulfillment. Jack, the daring entrepreneur, is hindered by his own physical limitations and insecurities. Ricky, the content bumpkin, is drawn into a world of danger and temptation, in a high-tech world where one's appearance and abilities can easily be changed for a reasonable price. This obsession with the surface and appearance reveals another important theme in Burning Crow, the connection between identity and technology. Bobby and Ricky's success as hackers gives them a sense of power and control over their lives, and their ability to manipulate technology is what sets them apart. However, their reliance on technology also blurs the line between their real and virtual selves, and when they hack into the eye system, they are forced to face the consequences of their actions. These virtual selves emerge in cyberspace. Burning Crow is the first story in which Gibson refers to cyberspace and it will become an important setting for all future cyberpunk stories. Cyberspace is a virtual world world created by the collective consciousness of computer users. It is a place where people can interact with each other and with computers using their minds, and it is described as being a vast and complex network of information and data. Bobby and Jack, the two main characters, are hackers who use their skills to navigate and manipulate cyberspace for their own gain. They spend much of their time in cyberspace, using it to gain access to the computer systems of wealthy corporations and steal money from them. It is here that the characters can cultivate and manage a chrome persona, someone who is cool, skilled and in control. However, over time, these virtual selves are pulled back to reveal individuals struggling to make their way in the world without clear moral guideposts. 
At the beginning of the story, Bobby is confident, incapable, skilled in the art of hacking and able to manipulate technology to his advantage. However, as the story progresses, he is revealed to be dependent on alcohol and women to function. Jack, initially seen as a capable partner and intrusion specialist, is revealed to have a physical limitation. His hand was severed in the past, which causes him insecurity and hinders his pursuit of success, particularly in his relationship with Ricky. These characters are ultimately transformed by the events of the story, forced to confront their vulnerabilities and the consequences of their actions. These transformations illustrate the challenges and consequences faced by the characters as they navigate a world controlled by technology and capitalism. This theme of constructed and managed surface virtual selves is best exemplified by the concept of chrome. The chrome probe is an important element of the cyberpunk genre, which is a subgenre of science fiction that focuses on the intersection of technology and society. In the cyberpunk world, chrome is often used to refer to the shiny, polished appearance of technology and virtual reality, and is often used in contrast to the meat, which refers to the physical world and the human body. In many cyberpunk stories, characters are drawn to the sleek, polished appearance of technology and are more concerned with its surface appearance than its function or utility. Chrome symbolizes the disconnection between the virtual and the physical, and the dangers of being seduced by the superficial appearance of things. In this way, the use of chrome in the cyberpunk genre is meant to highlight the complex relationship between technology and society, and the potential dangers of advanced technology. For example, in the story, Bobby and Ricky are described as being in love with their own equipment and with the machinery of their trade. This suggests that they are drawn to the shiny, polished appearance of their technology, and are more concerned with its superficial appearance than its function or utility. Additionally, the AI that Bobby and Ricky hack into is described as a black box with chrome surfaces. This imagery suggests that the AI is sleek and polished, but also mysterious and impenetrable. The use of the word chrome in this context highlights the contrast between the virtual and the physical, and the danger of being seduced by the superficial appearance of things. William Gibson's characters illustrate the challenges and anxieties faced by young people in the face of modern technology. In a world controlled by unseen forces, Bobby, Jack, and Ricky must find new ways to survive and they do not fit the traditional definitions of criminals because they commit crimes without physically leaving their homes. They use their computer skills and technology to access password protected systems, using only their fingers to type specific phrases, keywords, and passwords. However, this reliance on technology ultimately exposes their vulnerabilities and challenges traditional notions of crime and criminal behavior. These talented individuals seek alternative paths to wealth and success are lost in a world without clear paths to fulfillment. And thus, the metaphoric turn embedded in the title Burning Chrome is complete. This can reference the exhilaration of racing metallic shine roadsters against competition, a favorite pastime of youth that captures the dairy, flamboyance, and pure adrenaline of the fast life. But it can also exemplify the fiery burnout of the fast life coming to an end, along with it the passing away of the playful facades we put up to protect ourselves from the rigors of life as we grow and develop into adulthood. Gibson conceptualizes cyberspace almost as a playground, where we can play with identity but ultimately reality calls and we must eventually unplug to feed and maintain the body, because we are flesh and flesh ages and rots. In a way, this is false promise of cyberpunk, the opportunity to live forever as youth, clothed in the fashions of every year, zipping from one score to another, rotating around from place to place, but never really moving, and shining like well-waxed chrome on an ever-spinning axle. Thank you for watching the Cyberpunk Reader. Until next time, and if you enjoyed the content or found it useful or helpful in any way, please like and subscribe and click the bell if you want to notice next time I upload a video.